welcome to another edition of the now show it's a hot day somewhere in nigeria but hey we're going to have the great conversation that we are supposed to have and we're happy to have as well <laughs> so for the fact that i'm sweating a bit but it's okay it's okay we'll move past this so this episode is sponsored by so smoothie so this episode is sponsored by so smoothie are you at a phase in your life where you are trying to articulate the things that you are going through you are not sure how to put it in words or you do not even think that there is anybody that understands some of the things that you are currently going through this poem is the book for you we talk a lot about how it is important to write and journal and document things when we cannot necessarily say them this poem so smoothly is going to help you as your guide through down seasons and even joyous seasons as well to help articulate those thoughts that only you are thinking so it's kind of like a companion that has been written out for you articulating those words that are like hmm wow i like the way this sounds i like the way this sounds this book can relate and it's because the author can relate with what you are going through that's why she wrote it you can get this book via the link in my bio if you're watching this in another platform www.sagenail.com or bam books you can get it on bam books as well now let us get into the conversation okay all right let's see anita is And like we were saying earlier, the network went off. I think I was sharing yes. with you on WhatsApp. Mm. We were saying earlier, you were saying that where you are is cold. Yes. And I was saying it was absolutely hot over here. Mm. It is hot. Very hot. Okay, I think Omona has joined us. Yes. So how are you? How are you? I won't use the word coping. Are you enjoying the weather? Because honestly, if I'm just Yeah. <laughs> ah, Lita, why are you behaving cruelly like this? I don't. I think Omono is. I think she's trying to join, but a network. But I'm not sure. Omono, good morning. Now? Yes. Good morning. Okay. I wasn't sure. But now we can Sorry. hear. I, the network was so terrible. I'm so so sorry. Yeah, it's okay. My self, my, my I need some. Hey, hey. <laughs> woman of God. <laughs> I like this. I like <laughs> this. You're, you're put together. <laughs> you see it. <laughs> We are using it the way God wants us to. What's not happening to you? Talking true. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I'm back. Yes. You can hear me now. Yes, dear. Yes. Very, very I'm, even, I'm, I'm using I'm using two networks and I don't know why this one is just acting up, but it's fine. We'll go on. Vera is going to be joining or she she hasn't been feeling fine. She hasn't been feeling so fine. So she said she was going to manage to be able to join. So, but we'll start off the conversation before she joins in. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there's a lot to talk about, and I'm always excited when we have the live conversations because there are a lot of talk show platforms, whether online or terrestrial TV or even radio. It doesn't even have to be TV or video. 
I've not many times when people are not passing across important points that can actually build other people up. So mm-hmm. this platform we are created to make sure that we have these conversations and that is why we gather different women from different professions, even countries to come together with no one like I'm bringing diverse ideas and solutions to what it is that we are facing. Our first topic for the day, okay, I'm trying to see if there is, yeah, okay, so he's not here yet. Our first topic for the day is the Olu Jacobs and Olu and Jacobs, what I've what I've termed case study. So recently, Dr. Jacob came out to open up on what has been going on with her husband. And I really commend her for doing that because, again, <laughs> she, she, she may have chosen not to or she could have chosen not to, but she did. And there have been a lot of, I would say, talking points, learning points about it. But one of the resounding ones for me, welcome, Olua FX, welcome. That sort of, for me, is the ingredients of what, of what partners should bring into a marriage. What are the ingredients of what partners should bring into a marriage? Up until Joker and, and Olu Jacobs, many people, when they see, all well, them say the average big person, they will say many people, but the average person, when they see or when they think about marriage, they're thinking about honeymoon, a lot of glittering white dress and all of those things that are picture perfect. But this particular scenario, and again, because they are influential in their field with CV and acting, started bringing out other conversations like, oh, well, many people do not show they are better for worse out there. Hello? Hello? Yes, I'm here. Yes, and walking out of marriages or making marriage a marriage of convenience or a partnership of convenience. So my first question will be, and I'll start with Anita, what do you, well, I don't know if you've been able to check through with the case, but, or with this particular conversation, interview on the internet, but I would say, what would you say are the ingredients for building a partner that makes a marriage work, especially in the 21st century. Many things have changed. Women are now, unlike our father and mother's days, or even grandparent days, women are now working and even earning more sometimes. So it's not a matter of, you know, the woman is um, fetching firewood and the man is the one providing. So a lot of things have changed. And I've had conversations with men who say that there are, some of them are finding it hard to catch up to what women of this generation are like. So with the uh, with the generation, the uh, things and the people that women are becoming now, how can we still make marriage work? And how can we build ourselves uh, to have those ingredients? First of all, of course, as good people, as individuals, and then partners in marriage. Wow! Thank you again for having me. Um, honestly, being on this platform with women like yourself. I praise God, you know, whenever Nketi comes up and says, oh, let's do this thing, I'll be like, ah, okay, let's go, let's go. Um, and thank you to everybody who has joined. Um, Nketi, that question is, is such a loaded question. Um, I do not stand as any expert on marriage, singlehood, or, you know, any of that. Um, but by the yeah. grace of God, you know, we get insight. So what I'd say is... Oh. You know, you're quite right. Um, with the way women are moving, um, I don't think a lot has been poured into men, I just have to say, um, in terms of just getting them ready for the kind of woman that the 21st century brings. And I empathize with them sometimes because, you know, there's that what your fathers knew and then what you are seeing and, you know, trying to weigh and balance that out. But similar yeah. for women as well, you know, um, the women have received so much oh you can be great you can do this you can do that so you're now weighing what your mothers and fathers saw and then what you are seeing and the men you're getting but ultimately you know i think it's all about what is marriage you know i was listening to a a message by pastor robert morris and he was saying how marriage is a mirror of god so if marriage is a mirror of god 
then it means that ultimately we have to depend on God first mm. to show us what marriage looks mm. like now. And the thing is, in God, there's no deceit. I believe it's James 1 that says that. There's no deceit in God. There's no fickleness. There's no, you know, double-sidedness. So I believe mm-hmm. first, honestly, marriage is about a man, a woman, and God. A three, mm. a three, four call. So I think that's number one. Let's just drop it there. Because me, I don't like to talk too much up, you know. Oh, just make sure that, you know, you, you're quiet or, you you know, I, I all these things are they're great but number one is god uh number two is um i believe it's about two individuals mm. as well understanding the gravity of what they're getting into like you said i think a lot of people have a very utopic mindset of marriage you know um i give an instance i was speaking to one of ah. a friend of mine and he was saying how ah he used to think he wanted to you know him and his wife and himself to work um, and now he would prefer that mm. his wife stayed at home and he works and he kept talking. And to be fair, granted, he had a good point, but I then asked him, I said, okay, so what if you fall ill? And I don't think that's something he had mm. ever perceived. You know, he just felt, I'm going to be the man. I'm going to be working. Like, what if you fall <laughs> ill? What if you cannot provide yeah. in that financial way? Have you ever thought about that? The woman will have to step up. The woman will have to um, work. She'll have to provide. And I think it's about understanding that, you know, there's a reason why the psalmist says, yeah, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Everyone, every marriage will mm-hmm. face one trial or situation at a time. But the beauty of God is that he has said that he will not give us more than what we can bear. It's not that you should go into marriage being mm. pessimistic or expecting evil to work up. Mm. But you must expect that if two people are coming together to be like the mirror of God, the enemy is not happy about that. He's going to try to attack it the best way he knows how. And that will come with trials and tribulations and challenges. But we must depend on God and we must be realistic beyond the it's beautiful. The weddings are beautiful. Whatever country you come from, weddings look very gorgeous. Um, but it is uh-huh. beyond the wedding. It's beyond the actual day. Um, and then finally, I think, you know, we need to talk more. We need to over-communicate. Uh-huh. Is the truth. We need to be honest with ourselves. You know, I'm, I'm a really, I'm a big advocate of speaking. Communicate. Don't stay up and say, "Oh, they must understand what I what I'm thinking." No, they don't. <laughs> you know, I can't read it on your forehead. If you need sort of like a, a mediator, or, you know, like a counselor, or a pastor, or what, you know, whatever it is, like you have to communicate, or else, you know, God communicates with us all the time, um, and sometimes we need help with it. Sometimes we're able to get it ourselves. I think. Those three things are so important. God, you know, making sure that you're being real about the situation and understanding the gravity of marriage and communication, really, really important. Um, and by the grace of God, you know, the Holy Spirit will teach us to produce fruits of the Spirit in our marriage, but it's not the easiest thing, I have to say. Um, yeah, that's what I would, you know, that's what I think. I, I, I think about marriage. Thank you so much. Uh, there's a lot of talking points and, and learning points from what you have shared. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Omano. Please, mm-hmm. your points and your response to the question. Well, so, you know, the question is what can we learn from the Olu Jacobs and Joke mm-hmm. Jacobs uh, marriage? I mean, mm-hmm. I was looking at their profile. Anyway, before I start, I just want to thank you, um, Sage, for you know, putting this together again. Anita, it's good to see your beautiful face. And to everyone who is joining, thank you so much. And to those who would listen later, I pray that this will, you know, give you the information and the, the motivation to do better. Um, it's really exciting to, you know, be alive, first of all. So we're grateful to be yeah. alive to yes. the one who made, you know, and to have the opportunity to um, share in his grand plan you know um for joke and um, oluji because we we don't have a marriage that standard for everybody itself is very unique can you hear me please yes i can i can hear you okay 
So every marriage in itself is very unique. And from what my sister said, um, some of the key things, you know, that actually highlighted communication, just making sure you stay within your reality. Don't, you know, the wedding ceremony is not the, the, the main thing. It's, it's, it's what comes after. And also she said something, uh, the three full man man. We neglect cooperate to do things into our marriage instead of the whole, you know, eating the whole loaf of the bread and enjoying the fullness of that of that dish. Marriage, I believe, is a blessing. It is a blessing. It is not a burden, it's a blessing. And from Ulu Jacobs and Joker Jacobs, you can see that they have thrived over the years of, of just understanding each other. So they have they have worked on understanding each other. I mean, they've been married for over 30 years. And in their 30 years, it was not all bed and roses. I remember in one of the interviews I watched, she said something like, at, at the beginning stages of the marriages, she would tell, she would, you know, try to threaten um, her husband that I'm going to pack out and leave this marriage. And he mm. kept bearing and he kept bearing. Such a great man of patience. And at some point when she said it again and said, I'm tired, I want... And he said, the next time you say that, you must pack your things and you must leave. He was assertive. And, you know, that shock of it, <laughs> you know, it's just not a play again. So that he <laughs> not a play. What is wrong with you? So, uh, so yeah. your marriage wasn't all sort of roses. It wasn't all enjoyable. And we are not coming into the marriage with expectations. I'm not saying expectations in the sense that, oh, I want my husband or uh, my spouse, let's say spouse in this context, to be better. But we are coming with our own specific roles designed by God to fit into that place of marriage as a blessing. And one of the mm -hmm. things that I have learned, I've, I've been married for five years, um, which I'm grateful for, but there's this, con there's this, I don't know if it's a misconception or a, you know, a kind of saying that if you are able to survive the first five years of your marriage, you can mm. go on. But people have been married for 30 years and they divorced. So, <laughs> you know, what do we say about that? Which is, mm. of course, really painful because we don't look forward to having that kind of experience. People have their own, you know, whatever they went through. But when you see marriage as a blessing, then you know that whoever gives you the blessing is not the marriage of what you and your husband goes to do in the altar. It is what God himself, you know, just like Anita was saying that the design of the God in marriage is that man, woman, and God. Let me, let me just give an instance. When I was getting married to my husband, the first, the year before, prior to the time of getting married to my husband, I've mentioned, I've mentioned this so many times that I wasn't looking forward to marriage in the sense, mm. I wasn't looking forward to being married to someone. I mm -hmm. was going through a time that I wanted to just be, you know, in a place of sobriety and walking with the Lord, you know, having deep conversations with the Lord, just being married to him. And towards the end of that year, he told me I was going to come to you in the flesh. Mm. And prior to that time, he was teaching me how to be married to the Lamb, what submission means in faith. What being in alignment with his will means by faith. And when my husband came and he just told me, I want to get married to you, there was no corner, corner. I want, because that thing too of you have to be friends before you get married, it works for some people and it is good. I was, mm. but myself and my husband trying to get him married, we're not really like, ah, we've been friends for 48 years. We're not, mm -hmm. we're not friends. <laughs> You know, there was a deeper connection and that connection was based on what God wanted for the both of us. And to just, you know, align to, and I will be rounding up soon, to just really key into what um, Anita was saying. God told me when I was getting married that he gave me a word in the scripture, a, you know, Ecclesiastes 4, 11 to 12. And he said, a three cord is not easily broken. And he told me that he was going to be the third cut of my marriage. I'd never seen that scripture before. I'd never even heard it anywhere preached before. And he told me it was going to be the, the third cord of the marriage. And I held on to him and I called my husband who was 
you know, asking me out at the time. I said, okay, let us walk this marriage walk by faith. Mm. And my experience with marriages, my, my dad and my mom's marriage was very horrible. I mean, my mom passed when she was 34. And before that time, the experiences she had with being married to my dad were episodes of pain and turmoil. And she died in you know, looking forward to coming back to my dad, but my dad treated her so terribly that at that young age, I was just 12, you know, he was abandoned, he was cruelly um, treated by her husband's family, her, her own family did not understand her, they didn't even know how to really cooperate with her and help her, and she was a young, naive woman that mm. didn't know what to do with her life she she didn't even know how to devise visions and dreams and purposes for her life because mm. all now her focus and everything was to protect her children with, with four protect her children be a covering to her children i mean how do you how when you experience that kind of marriage you mm. understand <laughs> how would you look forward to want to be married then i was you know i was seeing other people around me as well their marriages was one-sided the husband was lazy the wife is trying to fit into the role of being a provider, a protector, you know, a giver and, you know, accommodating. And then, I, you know, marriages that you would see the husband drinking people. I mean, I was surrounded with broken marriages, as in marriages that were on the verge, people healing. So that already was trying to destroy the perspective of the godly marriage that, you know, was a blessing, a gift to us as human beings. But mm. when the law started to work with me, he told me, he gave me specific words, he removed that doubt and that fear that whatever I was going into, the role that he had designed for me, he would bless me equally with the gifts that would make the role of being a wife, you know, come to reality. And in the five years of me being married, not only have I seen myself evolve, I've seen, just like, you know, Anita was saying, she said, Marriage is like a mirror reflection. Actually, when I was also getting married to my husband, the Lord told me he was going to be the mirror image of what mm. he desires for me mm. to be in Christ Jesus. Mm. So both of us entered into this marriage with the big picture in mind to be, to be ready for the marriage of the Lamb. That day when we're going to be co-joined with Jesus as well. You know, so the reality is making us, you know, want to learn more about Jesus, want to learn more about ourselves and center ourselves in, in Christ-centered world. But let me just finish with this. Marriage is a blessing, but it stands on a law. It is built on a law, and it's the law of love. The mm. law of God's love is so powerful. You know, the, there were two distinct things that, you know, I've just been meditating on recently, that love is patient and love is kind. We have the ability to say, oh, the, this is how marriage should be, or that's how marriage should be. But when we look at the two fundamentals in 1 Corinthians 13, we see that love is patient, love is kind. These are the things it is. It is patient and it is kind. If the love of God is the foundation of your marriage, every blessing will have meaning and will cause a ripple effect in your marriage. Mm. Every gift that he's given to you, whether the gift of knowledge, whether the gift of understanding, because those things are gifts. Oh. All those gifts founded and founded on God's love mm. will help you to begin to understanding that this thing is not a mundane thing. It is a gift that God has given me to be ready for a bigger, bigger grand scheme in God's plan and will. And I think that is what the enemy channels his attack on. First of all, to see godly people marry. And then to see godly people who are working on their marriage to be ready for the grand plan of God. So the enemy comes with what? He comes with information on social media that are just detrimental yeah. to your soul, to your mind. You know, um, see how people are reacting to Joker Jacobs, um, you know, coming out to say, this is what my husband is. You know, mm -hmm. ah, this one. But, you know, I you know, dementia with lewd bodies, is it's very painful to hear that someone's spouse is suffering from that because I, she said in one interview that she, she desires to talk to him about some things, but he's not able to connect the dots. But look at how she still has awe and respect for her husband. It, it didn't lose the, the respect she had for her husband despite the challenges he's going through. 
That means yeah. that their marriage was not based on what they expected from one another. It was based yeah. on the faith they had in God that translated into their everyday living to say, no matter what, I will stand by you knowing that God already had planned this for the both of us. So marriage is a blessing. It's a threefold call, just as Anita said. Communication is key, but if you communicate like a fool, the response you will get is foolish response too. So as much as communication is key in marriage, you have to learn the skill on how your spouse understands with what you speak. Because it's not just, eh, I'm angry. Today I will pack and leave. You know, this is that. <laughs> no, you have, to, you have to learn patience and kindness in your words and understand that, okay, like I can't, I mean, let me just stop there so that we don't, we don't go out of time. Wow. Wow, that's really you good. Is she back? <laughs> Can she get here? Yes. Okay. I'm done in case you. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah. Yeah. Now, please. Im yeah, I've you're been, back now. You know, I've actually. Yeah. Dead. Yeah. That you were not even hearing what I was saying. I was saying, first of all, really thank you so much. And I was saying that part where you say if you communicate like a fool, it was like a slap. <laughs> I saw a no, video of a, <laughs> of a slap. It just, it just came to mind. It actually just came to mind. Thank you so much, Omono, for that insight. Thank you, Anita. I like the diversity and we're all learning. I'm going to be adding Vera. Really took there. our time to be here. Yeah, oh, she really there. took our time to be here, and I do not take it at all for granted. I wanted to, mm. I wanted Omono to finish before I'm able to add. Vera, thank you. Giving us. <laughs> Ah, uh, so nice has not even been feeling fine, so she dragged herself to be here, and I'm so grateful. Please, let us just try to really appreciate Vera. Thank you so much, Vera, for choosing to be here. Just fight how you're feeling. Thank you. Thank God. Ah, okay. um, I literally cried. I literally cried when she was talking. That's who? Cool. Amona. Um, no. yeah. yeah, so you can pick up from the conversation. I wanted to ask yeah, you. Cool. <laughs> oh no, my gosh. I, you are, I don't know. I feel like God was literally using you to talk to myself. Oh, thanks. I it was just, I, mean, I love the preparation phase. It reminds me of Esther. So, I mean, it was so good. So, what was the question? What's the question we're answering? Let me see what I can the say about that it. The we're conversing about before you joined in is we're looking at the Olu and Jokhe Jacobs case study. And then mm. a lot of people just gone wild on the internet, different people talking about it. And because in this generation, the average person is used to what I would say the glam of the marriage, not the other side where it's tough, it can be difficult, and there can be downsides. We're trying to discuss what are the learning points, what are the ingredients that should build a person or that should build a partner that is fit for marriage. But many people talk as if marriage by itself is an institution that causes problem. Whereas it's two individuals that actually come together, and if you are not con if you are not filled with the right fruit and spirit, of course you are going to cause problems. 
So I think what kind of building should go on in a person to be able to say, okay, I'm going to have this marriage that is built to last. Mm. Um, I think even for me, um, we're just two people that are single here. <laughs> God will help our destiny. We are God, 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 yeah, don't God, worry. God will help us. Oh, God, the way they are doing us, say, hey, they will come our wedding. <laughs> they will, they will, yeah. they will. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I mean, you will travel all the way. Yes, sir. I mean, <laughs> I, I got we'll bring you with prayers. It's prayer we used to bring you. Maybe that season, you probably be like one big amount of money supposed to come out of Nigeria for you, and you have to come down. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, thank you for having me. Yes, I think my testimony is that God is good. My health has been crazy for the past three weeks. Mm. Terrible, terrible stuff. But God is good. Um, I think one of the things that popped in my spirit when Omino was talking was <clears throat> the issue we actually have with coming into marriage is that we come with the attitude of taking, right? I mean, personally, like, you know when people say, like, somebody's son will love me. I want to give to somebody's son. Hey, God, there's just um. too much right there's just too much that i have like going on it's not um it's not it's like bringing all of the things that the lord has been teaching me privately and just wanting to like bless somebody's son with it so when people come with the attitude of like wanting to give i'm mean, wanting to take there's already a problem and i don't know what's like i mean I, I told you i've been very sick i don't know what has been happening on social media as much but then I think I used, I checked some of it uh, yesterday or some days back and I was like, I don't know exactly what people have been saying about Joke, but <sighs> she, she, she adores that man. She adores that man so much. And it's not a function of, um, it's not a function of what he has done for her or what he has not done for her. Um, I was reading a book by Jerry, Jerry Savile, and this is not popular opinion. I'm just going to share a bit of the story. Like, um, I don't know if anybody knows Jerry Savile. Uh, I don't know, like, this guy is one of the oldest people, like, with them, Kenneth Copeland, all of these guys that, like, um, earlier, and all of that. So, um, this guy, literally, he, one of the chapters of the book called, in his first steps of his prophet, was that God, to, God told his wife, to marry him, and this was a born again Christian that was carnal. He was carnal because he was drinking, he was smoking, he was doing everything. But she had like a clear vision. God told her, like, let's say, uh, thirteen years before they even like started being friends. God told her this was the person we we're going to marry. He was going to be a preacher in Africa. He was going to do this, do that. Do... I say. She was like, okay, she was excited about it. She had such a great relationship with God. Coming into this, this guy's life, this guy was born again, but was he's not somebody you would say that we should marry. He's not somebody you would say, mm -hmm. these are the qualities of people that you should marry and stuff. That's why I tell relationship counselors all the time. I'm like, allow God, like, yes, teach people, but always dump your students back in the hands of the Holy Spirit. He knows ah. what exactly he's doing with them. He knows their future, right? And I would, I want to say that's my journey or that's my story, but not fully because really that book for me is like, oh my goodness. And somebody had to recommend it for me on my birthday. I think my birthday was October. So like somebody had to recommend that book for me and the person was like, go read this book. And so if to think that I didn't want to speak that person's call. And she was like, go read this book. And then I was reading it. I was screaming and all of that. I think it was some years into their marriage, this guy had been annoying. There was even, it wasn't even a particular time. He carried a smoke, like he carried a cigarette into the church. I mean, this guy was just not it at all. This guy was not it wow. at all, married wife. But then she knew. She knew. And, and the thing is that she did pressure him to become that. She prayed. She was his wife. Wow. She did everything God told her before marriage that she's supposed to do. 
she obeyed God because when you're serving a man, you're not serving the man, you're serving God. It's God that brought yeah. you there for an assignment. And he, the guy also has an assignment over your life. He might not necessarily know it fully yet, but then it's what it is. It's God's journey for your life. I tell people this all the time. If Esther was in our days, we will not encourage her to marry the king. The king is a politician that is not well. The king is a politician that does not have sense. The king is a politician that is not even a Christian. He was not a Jew. Do you understand? But God had a bigger purpose for her being in that marriage. That was going to save thousands of people and she had to obey every word God gave to her so that she gets to the promised land. So here's the deal. The thing is, I think at the end of the day, um, she married him and then she respected him and honored him. She had children, had one of her ch um, children. I think I've forgotten her, her name. She's actually one of the co biggest coaches in, in the world right now as well. And then she's like, she respected him all through the journey. When he, when he finally surrendered to God, because the guy actually did everything she saw in her revelation, everything God showed her up until that moment, she would respect him as a king. She would honor him as a king. She didn't make him feel like you are, he was the one saying it that I, like, I, I'm, I'm, I don't have issues. My marriage has issues because of me. But she never literally like, she never literally, she, she never literally like put that like to get put the responsibility on him to make her happy. She did everything as unto the Lord. That's I'm like, let everybody's journey be everybody's journey. But then let it be that you are coming into you're coming into like marriage, whatever the Lord has prepared you for. So whenever you go to even as a single person, whenever you go to God, go to God, what do you have for me? Right? What do you have for me? What's my journey like? The truth is that God will allow you to fall in love with your journey. And yes, you would cry. Yes, you will feel like, why, why am I, why, why? Is this, is this, is this, is there something wrong with me? But then it's God of your journey. It's not you. You didn't come here by yourself. Except, let me just tell you the truth. I had to follow a lot of relationship counselors. That's just what it is. Because what God was giving me as assignments to do, was not normal. I probably will talk about this like later, but not now. Yeah, because the whole thing God has like made me do and all of that has made me see that the truth is that as long as you're becoming more like Christ, like he's the one giving you the journey. He's the one putting you inside of this. He's he has a destination in mind. And most times I'm like, I sure there's not like way better, like the way all of these other pastors are saying out there for me. And God is like, oh, you're better. You will see it soon. Just hold on for me. She understand. See, this is about your relationship with God. This is about God forming you to be like Him. You're not sinning. You're not jiggered. You're not doing what He's asking you not to do. You are standing and you're standing firm inside of Christ. Now, that is what makes the difference. When you come into marriage, you're not coming to marriage because even people, people like you can't just divorce. See, when you have a revelation, a clear picture of what the Lord has shown you, you would not do what you would pray and you would act on you are discipled until you see the manifestation of what God has said over your life. You would stay there. Do you understand? And it's not this is not a case of domestic abuse or no, that's not what it is. Do you understand? So, I mean, I feel like every human being under god if you really say that you're under god should ask that question why right and the thing about it is that the more we spend time with god he will give us the desires of his heart and so if you're spending time with god and the desires of your heart are pointing towards a direction that's your your, your normal self will not point towards just go after it <laughs> girl you get it you get it just just because your heart just starts to palpate in such a way you're like no, wow, dear father, this this desire you're putting my hands is not normal. People would think I'm crazy. So just do what you're asked to do. And move. So yes, that's it about wow. kingdom stuff. No, it's had a lot of very important stuff. And it's evil. It is even dropping the next question that I want us to answer. Uh, let's, okay. So I would like us to. There's this thing about church marriages. It's not written. What I mean, church marriages. So the, the girls, especially in the church setting, girls 
But once you get married and they will have their leaders say things like, you cannot get married outside of this church. Or if you get married outside of the church, you start receiving certain kind of attitude that makes it look like you are not longer needed or you are not loyal or so and so on and so forth. So you said a lot about you know going on the personal journey and going through the journey of your unique journey that may not be the same with others. So I'll start with you, Vera. <laughs> What do you have to say regarding such kind of mindsets that people think you must get married in this church because this is how it goes and this is how it must be? And some people just do that because they want to feel accepted. What, what are your, because these are real issues and these are the reasons why a person may have a unique assignment, like you're talking about Esther, but the person is not going for to pursue it because of fear. Uh, because of wanting to be accepted and just all these other things that comes with um, the toughness of being thrown out of a church in quotes. I hope you can hear me because I hear myself echoing. I don't know if it's myself. Yeah. Okay. I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. I Am I still echoing now? Okay, you sound better now. Okay, I'm better I'm now. Uh, okay, okay, because it was getting distracting even for me. Okay, so I hope did you get the question? Okay. Yes, we did. What can we do regarding this whole marriage and people in quote mentors wanting to force a person to marry a kind of yes. person, whether it's the church or is their son or a kind of person that you think is right for them? Yeah, I mean this happens even with our parents. It's like mm. it's not even like uh, just a church or religious thing. So, um, it, 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 I mean, I think what usually happens, what, the question I have for people, the people that are struggling with this is, mm -hmm. who, like, who do you aim to please? Like, who mm -hmm. is your God? Because when things start to get bad, it's not your mother you will call or your church. Mm. And you know how messy it can be when a relationship is like when a marriage relationship is going really crazy, and the pastor is saying do this, do that, do this, do that, and it's not working, and it's just getting worse. Mm. You would then remember that it was not your, it's not, it was never your pastor you were supposed to call. It was supposed to be God. Mm. Let me give you, let me give you this, let me tell you this gist that happens. So one of these my episodes and my journeys, I was literally crying. I was like, God. Now, wow. so um, I got on Instagram and like I, I'm sorry, I got on YouTube one very random day. I think it was October, early October, and I saw mm. how to do something, something like you get. There's this way to do something, something so that a guy can you get how to do it. So it has this um, put this. Um, it's like they use natural herbs to do stuff. <laughs> but as I, as I opened the video and started on YouTube, I ran away. Hey, my sister, <laughs> I ran away. I then told my friend about it. I, come and I, said, I was like, eh, you know, this thing you're crying. Oh, shit, let's take a light. Let me step out. I was like, this thing you're crying about, like, you would, so you're saying I would just use one awesome leaf or jiggers, we use fruits and all of that. Like this thing would just walk like be like magic. The person will start answering you and stuff. So like, so I immediately I checked it. Immediately I, immediately I opened the YouTube page and stuff. I was like, I was like, this is how like people literally get themselves into a lot of problems, because you then forget that it was God that brought you on this journey. It was never mm. yourself, and like it was even if God did not bring you on the journey, like God is your God. And like you are supposed to ask him for the path that he has for you and if he actually has none right you're supposed to like look at the scripture and say that this is the path i'm going to follow so the thing is i ask people that all the time by the time something is wrong like is it those youtube guys that will come and answer me and say oh i'm the one that helped you in this particular situation next who are you going to answer? Like, yes, like it had worked. It had worked at that time and the time has passed. So when you go back to God, what exactly are you going to tell him? Okay, like, were you, not, were you not just foolish? Were you not just, were you not just foolish? Were you not just like looking, looking at like satisfying a 
in which most of the times all those times you're crying god is literally using the opportunity to like train your heart so like mm. why do you want the shortcut when go, even god himself even christ himself did not take the shortcut to the cross or mm. the shortcuts to glory why on earth would you want to do that to yourself so like it's like who's your god that's that's the question i've always asked i've always wanted because people actually reach out to me i know people that reach out to me and say to me this is what's happening and i always ask them what did god tell you mm. do you even hear god and like is this how your life is going to be based on like what auntie or like coach vera is saying or like what this person is saying or what that person is saying like what exactly is that how your life is literally going to be for the rest of your life like you just depending on human beings that are fallible like today they will say this thing and tomorrow they're not even sure what they said before is that how your life is going to be so that's the question like who do you answer to may i answer to god i don't know who we like i don't know about any other person so that's my question for them like who is really your god so that's 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 it Okay, and what are your thoughts on this matter of a church, marriage, or religious setting, or parental, everything together? Why I even brought out church as an example is because it is real. It is very real. Some people accept their spiritual leaders or respect their spiritual leaders more than their parents. <laughs> so mm -hmm. even if the parents don't say something, mm. but when the spiritual leader is not in alignment, it's a lot of problem for them. So what are your thoughts? Man, I think today is um today is real day. Not that other days were not real day. <laughs> but I think today particularly. Um and I just felt the Holy Spirit just he kind of letting me know that be real though. Don't, you know, like, <laughs> don't talk up. Um, Vera, that was really good. You know, I know that the Holy Spirit is here. Um <laughs> Okay. So just so that I don't forget, I think we need to hopefully, you know, can you think about this? Just a really a session around um the ideas that we get from marriage. You know, oh. like a lot of people are dealing with what Omono spoke about, which is like having parental or the people around you. I'm someone who has lived in many houses. I've lived with many okay. people. I've lived with people. And that really affects how we see marriage a lot of times. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, it's really good. And for anybody who is here, who is struggling with that, I pray that God will give you peace. Um, to this question, let me just say about... Eh? Vera, as you were talking, I was just like, this guy is just saying, I had a conversation, it literally the same conversation last night, till about maybe 11 this morning, um, uh, till about 1 or 12 this morning. Who do you report to? Who? That is the question. I had a story of a very big bishop who people mm. respect. And I was listening to a, a, a message, and this same thing was was being talked about, which is, and they said, when the daughters want to marry, they will have to bath them in chicken blood for them to go. This is a bishop. Now, I keep saying that there's a reason why Paul had to write to the apostles, write to the churches, because their culture was entering inside, you know, inside the gospel. Yes. Okay. Now, let's talk about Nigerian culture. We have great parts of it, but we also have parts that, if not channeled properly, can lead a person into destruction. Uh. We have this, I know what is best for you. If I talk, you uh. sit down and you listen. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you come mm -hmm. to maybe other Western cultures, Western cultures are a little more, you know, okay, do what you got to do. Okay, is that who you love? All right, just go. Mm -hmm. You know, our own culture is more like you say you are marrying you. from where? Who is he? Who is she? What did they do? Them, you know, like, ah, no, no, I don't have it. I said this. Person. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm sorry. Who are you exactly? Like, I know you are great. I respect you. I, you know, like, and don't do it in a violent way. But just remember, if it is God that has said, let my people go, it doesn't matter whether Pharaoh wants to tie you people like this. He will finally let you go. Even God that had in his own heart 
Eh? He still let the Israelites go. So, my dears, my darlings, let me hold my ear like our mother's baby. Please. Nobody is your God except God. Don't mm. compromise your destiny for anybody. Respect destiny. people. Be loving with people. Listen to them. But you see, one thing that we said was, um, I had a conversation yesterday, and we said, you see, in the Garden of Eden, the serpent came with a concept. He said, did God say? Did God really say? Mm -hmm. I know that what he said, there was not an element of somewhat truth in it. It is the fact that it was a what truth. Now, what Eve did was, she saw it. I can't tell you that I will not do what Eve did. I might have eaten the whole tree. You understand? Make you salad. Do you understand? But I see that Eve did not now go back to Adam. To say, oh boy, this snake said something. Do you remember when uh, God said this thing? And Adam too did not say, Madam, come, let's really talk about this thing. He just said, but God said, man. She said, no, you, it's okay. And then when God now came, you see what he said? When he asked them a question, Adam said, he's the one he gave me. He said, he's the second. Mm. Don't go into something eh, with God. You will always find somebody to blame. Ah. You, you, will to point, God. you will point at somebody else. When you are going through that trial and tribulation and that person who came and said, don't marry this person because their leg is like this. But God was telling you, no, marry this person. No matter how long it takes, I think sometimes impatience as well. We're like, okay, let this thing just be over and done with. Like, and it's not easy. Because some of us that we are talking, we are experiencing it. Do you understand? Yeah, we are experiencing it. You want to go down a particular path and either your parent or your your pastor, we don't we don't mm. marry outside of this church. Or mm -hmm. when he's not a member of this church, so I have a friend. You are not you're no longer a member of this church, so you can't marry here. Mm. Huh? Pastor say what? <laughs> mm. So I think again, they are human beings, they see in parts. We cannot put that responsibility of them of God. Uh -huh. So even at that, I'm not even angry at you. It is just your limitation in this place. But also, mm -hmm. my uncle always say everybody has the right to make a mistake. Uh -huh. It's the free will that God has given us. It is now our uh -huh. is like, oh no, we're talking about the law of love. When somebody goes out and makes a mistake, it's not now. We told you. We said that you don't marry outside of this church. So that is why the marriage... That is not what you are supposed to do. Even if you were correct, at that moment, love demands, like the prodigal son, we accept you. And we love on you. And we care for you. So I would just say to anybody that is going through that, like Vera said, please, who is your God? Mm. Go back to your God. What did your God say to you? In your own garden, mm. what did he say to you? And if that person is truly somebody who hears from God, the Lord will give them peace. But don't go and say, that person I'm telling you about, that they wash themselves with chicken blood. They mm. now say that, that immediately they wash themselves with chicken blood, that they now run to the mountain of fire. I say, but please, why do you do it? <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, why did you save an extra prayer point? And I get it's yeah. really tough. Because depending on how you've grown up and how you've seen your parental guidance, you know, and then your parents is your pastor. Like, mm. it's tough, you know. But ultimately, you just have to say, when I'm standing before God, when I'm standing before God, is it this person that will stand with me? The answer is no. Mm. That is the truth. And your salvation is more important than your your job, your family, your everything. He says, for this reason, when God, Jesus asked that guy, okay, leave everything, he said, ah, no, I can't do. But that is sometimes what is required. You have mm. to let go of people. You have to just say, okay, I love you. But no. Hello. <laughs>
Like, I love you. So, no, I'm not buffing in chicken blood. I'm not going to marry somebody in the church just because you said I have to marry somebody in the church. No, because they will still be the ones that will not say, oh, sorry, you, hey, che, you know. <laughs> and me, well, you're the one dealing with it. So, I encourage anybody who's going through it. Um, it's not an easy task. Uh, I've personally experienced these things myself. And um, God will guide you. God will lead you. God will give you strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run, not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. God will take care of you. Just remember that God is your number one. And God is more import- is more interested. God is more interested in who you get married to than even you yourself, than even your pastor, than even your parents. He is more interested because it is his own glory that your marriage is going to portray. I leave wow. it at that, guys. Thank you so I'm so much. sorry. I need I need to I need to say this like mm. guys, like it's this is a burden. Mm. Like I don't know whether in case you can come up with a chorus or something yes. about yes. here in God. Yes. It's a burden as in I can feel it literally. Let me give you an instance. When I was going to hold all this journey, like by the way, if you send me a pers- personal message, I'll, I'll, I'll like I am um, like just for us here if you send me a personal mm-hmm. message like i'll tell you about this journey mm. because personally when i was going through this journey it was the same god had like shared with me 2019 2020 and like i had written it out and all of that when this person was acting all the drama in the world i was like god i'm not doing it again i'm gonna go what's gonna be done this is not me i'm a queen i'm a queen i'm a queen <laughs> I'm not <laughs> you know that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing. Like, I think one day my friend just posted on her status. She just says she's getting married, but she was playing. She was just joking up her dad, and like, uh, I just called her. I said congratulations. She was like, she was joking, and that's how I ended up telling her about the journey that I was in. Mm-hmm. And do you realize that this girl was in the same journey with me, and mm-hmm. not just that. She didn't even know, and like she was just reading out my journal to me. She was like, she was like, she first laughed and said, "Oh, leave this guy away." Like her flesh, she was just talking like this guy, you know, guy, like, like yeah, no, we can't do this, we can't do this and stuff. She was first. She just said, "I'm very, I'm so sorry right now." Like God said, I should tell you that you're not going anywhere. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Mm. And literally, she just is like she opened my journal to me. I started sharing everything God had said. I'm just like. Get, mm-hmm. get out of my life yes, like yes. get out of here mm. so like you don't want you <clears throat> you said they that wait upon the lord sharing in their strength the question is are people waiting upon the lord yes mm. are you are you are you are you are you are you you will not marry are you waiting upon them oh what's the next thing that they're going to say what's the next thing oh, oh, what's, what's the next nothing thing? Yeah, exactly oh, what what's the next thing they're going to what, say are they going to tell me that is, um, oh my god Oh my God! Mm. See, it was immediately she shared that. And here's the thing: in this journey, I've heard people that actually legit like gave me revelation. I'm supposed to get out, and I just looked at them. You are not the God of my journey, thank God. Mm. So when I'm going back to God in the prayer, it's not that way. This person said that, eh, so who asked you to listen to the person? I you the funniest thing about these things. Most times, we're not asking for. Don't don't. Don't give us your suggestion. Just listen. Yeah. And okay, yeah. even if you're not going to, even if you're, you don't have like, you have like, like another negative notch about it. Don't share. Because I told you, God told me. Right? Yeah. And you're supposed to trust that I know my God. Even as pastors, we do these things and we don't even know. Because I'm a spiritual leader as well. And we do these things without even knowing where we're like, can God really say that? If I tell you the trajectory of my journey, even as a coach in VACC, some things God has asked me to do. Can you catch with me for such a long time? The time I did a program that it was obvious that God said to me, in fact, I entered into a lot of trouble after mm. that program. Program. Mm. I entered into a lot of trouble, like court cases. And I, and I asked God, I said, God, did you bring me here? <laughs> that was how this, my God, was quiet on me. But ask me what happened that time and who I became after. It was obvious that God wanted me to go on that journey because I was still very young. 
that thing I did, I was still very young. And God, God said to me that if you can come out of this as a very young person, most of your mates will just be meeting this when you have finished it. Mm -hmm. You would have gotten older. Do you understand? You would have like you know when you say Dagba, you would have you would have been older than you. When you're speaking, you're not going to be speaking as someone that is young. God had a reason for me going through that journey and looking at it with an normal eyes. Somebody will say, You need to go to MFM. Somebody will say, Oh, you need to go to that place. Oh, you need to go to that place. Go and pray. Somebody, somebody is after your life. No, God mm -hmm. sent you up, just like He said, Job up. So the issue, it was a burden for me. I've always had this burden. It's very deep seated. I'm like, Guys, are you literally listening to God for yourself? Or because here's it, even in this journey, I've had to, I've had to ask myself that. Because in case you've been here, like when I had like another person, I went to the same journey with another person, like another relationship. Do you mm. And I'm coming back and I'm like, oh my God, what exactly is happening? Is that I'm not passing the course? I'm not doing something right? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? God is the God of your journey. But the question is, do you even know God? Are you hearing his voice? Do you know that he's the one talking to you? Because in this kingdom, emotions is not going to win. No matter how much you cry, you will not marry. You. And even if you marry, you marry by your own will. You will force somebody's hand. After you do that, you enter and you still go back to God. Hmm. Well, you understand? It's a lot of burden and a lot of burden for me. I'm like, are we literally waiting on God? Are we sitting down with God? Do we know God's voices in our life? Like, how can we develop this thing so that we can actually know? My friend recently broke up with a person uh, some time ago and we were just talking about it. I know that it's something we come back together. And this is how I've been looking at them. I didn't say a word. I just looking at them laughing. She went on a hearing God course. I told her at the end of this course, you would tell me, by your mouth, you would tell me something I already know. Just two days ago, she, was to me. She, she, she opened her mouth and said it by herself. Mm. I, didn't, I didn't force her. I didn't, do you understand? I didn't tell her like this is what I'm sensing. I didn't say a word. She, by herself, she opened her mouth and said what I knew she was going to say after she had gone through that course. Mm. Not it wasn't even my course. Mm. She understand. So it's like, guys, like, are we like, what are we do? What is discipleship about, really? Like, uh, my friend is here. He just joined in. Ray, like, okay. he will tell you his own journey. He went through his own journey with his with his own marriage. It was a lot. It was mm. a lot. But God, it, on the other side, it, on the other side of it, he will uh, tell you that God was here from the beginning. From the beginning, he's in Canada now with his wife. God was here from the beginning. Like, there were signs. Outside that external factors, everything was mad. Like, people, you say, okay, we're tired. We're not doing a game. We should break up. Let's go our way. Let's decide. We're not going to do this anymore. I was here all through the job. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Do you hear God for yourself? How does God speak to you? Is it through images? Is it through words? What exactly is God saying to you? It's a burden. You know, people are buffing with blood. People are doing stupid things and listening to their past. I mean, when you get to heaven, you will knock on your pastor. Okay. That one shocked me. <laughs> it shocked me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, what are your thoughts? And you could also add, in addition to answering the question, oh no, you could also add some of the things that people can do in solidifying their relationship with God so that they are actually really hearing God. Because many people are unsure of where they are in their relationship with God, and that's why they are like all over the place. So you can add that to the rest that you're sharing with us. Well, we've already spoken extensively there. We thank God for the healing anointing and the healing virtue, just touching your body right now and bringing about her to the new brand. And restoration and if at any point during the conversation you feel that you need some kind of rest you'd be very glad to step in for you um, but in the meantime the contributions you've made you know equally and anita has been amazing and just to see the passion of jesus in our hearts mm -hmm. and coming together to talk about it is, is a blessing uh, for I, I don't think I've been a traditional uh, listening to the pastor person. Now, this is not uh, disregarding some very key spiritual leaders we have in our lives. Mm. Some mm. of them have sincere and genuine care mm. for looking at us. But when it now turns into personal doctrine, when it turns into my personal need for you, Mm. It becomes idolatry. 
the Lord detest idolatry. Yeah. And idolatry is not necessarily even going to bath into things, Lord. It is just exalting your opinions or ideas above the opinions of God. Mm. And this is what you know, Jesus, Jesus came to be doing a whole lot of Phariseeism in our daily life with God. It's like you have zeal for God, but you don't have the love of God. And, you know, over ambition, over self ambition, or whatever form of ambition we have, that is not rooted, first of all, in the love of God that influences how we think, our emotions, our will, you know, our soul. Mm -hmm. It clouds cloud the right person. And the basis for what we are following, pattern, is the of Jesus. Hmm. Who is Jesus in the kingdom of God? How? If Jesus is taken out of that equation, you are just following a religious activity or doing a religious activity, not necessarily a divine purpose. Hmm. Jesus is the, is the Jesus is the blueprint for um, what marriage should be like, what life should be like in general. Marriage is not even the, marriage is not the problem. It is what we ourselves are thinking. Our our mind, our our. I'm I'm very careful to talk about this because I know it is a dicey situation that even though the four of us try to talk about it till so thy kingdom comes, some people will not still be so, mm -hmm. they will still argue with you that they are you guys know what is best for them. And because their leaders know what is best for them, they, they you know there is a form of laziness. There's a form of laziness that these leaders project to their followers. And that complacency and that laziness comes as a result of telling people, putting yourself in a God position that I know everything that God wants for you. So that laziness stirs the heart of people because if you can get into the mind of a man, you can control everything about his life. So what happens is the you know the deception starts in the heart, mm. just like Anita was that went in reference to the shrewdness of the serpent, how he suggested it to Eve. How look at, look at the first the first basis for marriage was God, man, and, and Adam and Eve. Mm. There was no pastor, there was no leader, there was no spiritual guide, nothing like that. It was God, the counselor, God acted as their counselor. God acted as their teacher. God was their mentor. God was their foundation. They knew everything based on God matters. But when you now have God, man, and then woman and man, mm. there is already a problem. The Bible says there's only one mediator between God and man. That mediator is Jesus. There's no point in the Bible that says that. The word of God said, Paul, Paul said this is why we have apostles and Christian leaders in the church. For the edification of the church. For the building up of the church. But when you take that assignment out of the plan of God for your members or for the people that you are shepherding, mm -hmm. then it does become idolatry. It becomes, it becomes cowardly. It becomes stupidity at you know in its full sense. So one of the things that I would I personally have learned in my life mm -hmm. um when I gave my life to Christ when I was 16, the Lord came to me and he told me that he was going to be my mentor. When he said that this was not for me preaching. Nobody preached to me that God can be someone's mentor. I'd never heard it before. That was it was no it was it was new. That was God being my God. And I kept him. But what the Lord did over the years, as in he was teaching me through books, I was learning about him through books, I stayed on the Bible. The word of God is the foundation for our lives. There is no other route. There is no, nobody can explain this great book best than the author. There is no, there is no pastor most skilled there is no leader extremely skilled in the world. 
the only one who is skilled is the author himself, which is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has the ability to break down every word of God to benefit you at every point in your life. So the Lord started to teach me on this journey. And in that, I didn't have any dependence from there. God helped me. He stripped me of any dependence on man mm. to, to talk to him. He, 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 that, was, that was just a personal journey. Unfortunately, we have men and women who have fallen prey of being under the jurisdiction of a leader who they respected and who they they. They were, you know, in awe of, and some of these leaders have been on, on that, on that, which is so painful. So, yeah. when the Lord said to me, at the journey of my life, he decided to bring mentors, mm. physical mentors that I could listen to that put into the kind of message that he wanted me to grow in and to also be a voice of impact. In. So we know impact we see impact just like Anita said. But when in, when perfection comes, imperfection goes away. It's not a futuristic term. It's mm-hmm. something that can happen in your life as a result of focusing and aligning your life with the love of the Lord, which is perfect, you know. And I think some of this regard from our leaders or whoever <coughs> in charge comes as a result of fear. Mm-hmm. People are afraid to take spiritual responsibilities for themselves yeah. yep so yeah. they want to, want to put the blame to put the responsibility on somebody else and most times it's usually our pastors and leaders and when mm-hmm. your pastors and leaders begin to send that ah the burden to you know be the head in this church they start to bring in stupid you know things imaginations that are not really like let us go and let you in chicken blood or let's go to the river and pay those things, those things that look that feel good temporarily does not have any lasting effect. Yes. So they, they, they look important. Just imagine God brought out the Israelites from Egypt, right? Moses went on the mountain to hear what was the next step. My our people said, Ah, Moses is taking long. Let's look for a way that is pleasing to our eyes, to our senses, to our special desires. And they made the golden cow. Patient. They made the golden cow. That is what we are doing. That, that is what we are, we are in the future. But this is the, this is the good news. Yeah. This is the good news. The good news is, no matter how far you have gone into this dilemma of people's idolatry, of people's cowardness, and people's wickedness, there is a saving grace available for your rescue. And that saving grace is in the power of Jesus. And all you need is to have faith in what he has done. And I'm just using this medium to call out on people who are dependent on the spiritual leaders and have continually seen a pattern of failure, everything they do. Spiritual leaders are a blessing to the body of Christ Amen. if they are following God's will. If there is no competition between my church is better than your church yeah. or my, you know, my way of teaching is better than your way of teaching. They are good pastors out there. They are good leaders out there. They are good apostles out there. And we are praying by, by the mercies of the Lord that God we are, we align you to find those leaders and, you know, First of all, to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And then in loving God, there will be a transfer of the knowledge that you need. And the people who will teach you right now, the Lord will bring to your path. Amen. Amen. Wow, this conversation. <laughs> Anita, what were you writing? I thought I was just writing. <laughs> 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 what is telling us? Because Anita is just writing. Wow, somebody is asking for serious. No, no, don't be, don't be. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> I think I think um, um, Omano's journey. I don't know about in case you like. We actually never really talked about your marriage journey before. It was always me just saying you this this in case in my life. I'm tired of you. <laughs> so I think Omano's journey um, is the perfect representation of what all of us journey should look like. Did you get like mm. know God for yourself. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm talking about like the preparation part. Did you get? <laughs> yeah. Knowing God, 
yeah, yeah for yourself you you yeah. 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 I mean you, you struggled yeah yes the concept mm. like no god for yourself because when you were even talking this morning that was all i was saying i was just like your own was just very funny your own was i don't want to marry but god had to take you through a journey so all, god knows what all of, all our idols and all our issues are and he knows like how to pull the pull the door baby out of us like this you're holding it to your chest take get it out <laughs> do you understand how to get it out of our bodies like you mm. you 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 made it like uh, a god you you hogged it for such a long time and then that thing for you was like i'm not I'm not going to get married. I'm not going to do this one. I'm not going to do that. And for me too, I want to marry this kind of guy. God, this kind of person. And God is like, you're holding it like this. I'm not going to allow you because it's going to ruin your destiny. And that's not what I have for you. So that's just what it is. Yeah. You know, I, I'm really sorry, Ngechi. I know you have another question. I just want to say that God being my mentor did not make everything rosy. Mm-hmm. Didn't that's make everything it. Rosy. That's it. It didn't, it didn't make, I, I felt sometimes I neglected some of the things that the Lord was teaching me. Mm-hmm. That's why I said, no matter how far you have gone in the completion of your life, I've met spiritual leaders who should have been mentors as well that almost ruined my destiny. Mm-hmm. So, and I've also been involved in fellowship that would have destroyed my life mm-hmm. forever. Mm-hmm. But this is the thing. The foundation of your life is very key. If it is Jesus Christ, He will bring you back. Mm. And every time I went to my place of solitude and just have that sobriety, that place of saying, God, you know, when you have gone so far, there is a knowing. In fact, there was a point I was going to denounce my Christianity and say, Ah, I don't think I'm faithful enough because. They, they, you know what, what they were putting so much high demand on me that if you don't do this, it means you don't have to. If you don't marry this person, it means you are not working with the Lord. You don't. So I was like, but I don't have any passion for this. But I don't. Not that I hate this brother, right? but I'm not really in tune. God has not. Been, but I was forcing myself to say, ah, I want to marry this person. I want to marry this person. And when that when the news came that I have failed God, ah, oh God, you don't understand. My heart was broken to pieces. I went that night and said, God, I'm done with you. I don't want to, I don't want to fail you. So let me just be living a worldly life. It seems easy as if to live worldly life because everybody is doing it. Until the Lord told me that night, abide in me. He says, you know, he gave me it. So it was not all rosy. So that's why I'm saying that even in, in, in the Christian dom, in our relationship with the Lord, sometimes we fail. Yeah. The only perfect high priest we have of our life that we can always totally trust is Jesus Christ. And therefore, when we go back to him, he knows how to redirect our steps to the Father. And that is where love with patience comes in because the patience of God is out. Mm. Thank mm. you so much. Your Honor. Your Honor was just able to help us wrap that wrap that up. And yes, regarding what Vera said, I am definitely going to share. I've not felt the leading to share that publicly yet. But <laughs> because my journey was an interesting thing. I'm saying getting into my very yes. interesting. Very interesting. Like it's a classic movie. But I would definitely share that. <laughs> I would definitely share that. Like once I get the leading to share it publicly. Okay, yes. Thank you for saying that. Alice, I hope I've been saying it in their minds, but you said it publicly. So I want us to uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want us to wrap up with this. Some of the other things we will talk about it next time. Um, it is the what I've changed, I would say the baby those case study. For me, I guess well I I I think or I've observed, let me say that I've observed that the case study, when I say the case study, so for anybody listening that doesn't understand this. Some days ago in Nigeria, there was a musician that got over I think it was a hundred million. Yes, I think it was a hundred million. In that. Ah, well, so, yeah. million. <laughs> exactly. In yeah. between between twenty four to forty eight hours, and 
there was just a lot of wave, you know, whatever, like buzz around it. And I think at the end of the day, he decided to give it to orphanages across Nigeria. But that's not even what we are going to be talking about. I just think that there is more. There are more Christian things that can come up. There are more Christian. Let me talk, for example, in my field, maybe Christian radio stations, uh, more Christian television stations. For example, I'm just giving an example. Like more Christian institutions. When I mean Christian institutions, I cannot be plastered on it. Oh, Jesus organization. That's not what I mean. I mean the value system and the things that they are producing from it are things that carry the precept and the word of God. But I will say that, except it's existing, one, maybe I'm the one that is not aware. I must say that I'm quite disappointed that. Sometimes it just looks at people, and we keep also we keep praying, oh, um, people in the world, people in the world. But then it's not about shout people in the world. Many of these people that people say they are in the world, they pack their money into institutions, record labels, things that they believe in, and those are the things that are spread into the world. So, my question and the you know, conversation that I'm looking at us having today is please, how can we collaborate more as? Christians or as people of faith who actually build institutions for work. I was telling someone not just yesterday, telling me a voice note of, of a Christian person who founded a spa. And if you know a bit about the spa industry, <laughs> you know, anyways, there's a lot there. But this Christian was called the advocate a journey. Joyce Awoshika, she was called and uh, by God. And, you know, it's a very odd, like, spa. And, you know, people are busy doing great things. It's me, you know, I'm building a spa. But that's what God wanted us to build. And, of course, she's more in that industry, taking dominion and doing the right things. So there are other industries. But sometimes, dear sisters, I just feel like many people just want to be inside the church and think that all their life is all about everybody doing the same things. Maybe feeling like if you are not speaking, you are not doing something important. So, how can we build institutions, not just with our words and with our time, but also with our money? And I would maybe close with what I mean. Close with this. I'll wrap up my question with this. I also think there's a lot of non-collaboration going on with Christians. I personally think that if some pastors, I'm taking an example now, not that I'm um, just, if some pastors come to me that to say, okay, what can we do in the media industry, for instance, I'm just speaking for my industry, we would have more radio stations that are blasting music that are edifying beyond what we hear every other day. Every other day, you keep hearing music that are just, there's no, what, what they go music, please. just a lot of music that when you get into your soul you'll be wondering what is it doing there but it's but it's not a matter of um, talking about it is what are we going to do if you want people to do different then what are you going to produce that is higher how what are you going to bring what are you going to bet that will actually make a difference so oh, could you pay with that? <laughs> sorry i didn't get that okay the comments that Oh, okay. My is yeah. So I just want to know how, you know, I produce, I because of the, the new show I've gotten on radio, I have to kind of like give them my playlist. And she will get playlists. I said, I have to be looking for songs. I have to be looking for, I, so, so I will add, look, I will add one gospel song to it. Because you are really wondering what, like, so where are the people that are coming out to sing the love songs? I know, yes, well, here and there, some people. What if these radio stations or TV stations want certain kind of thing? How are we going? How are we building it in the sphere of influence that we are in? So I hope that I've not you know over spoken about it, and I hope that the question is even clear. I think I will start with Anita. What can we do differently? How can we collaborate? I just think that Christians were great, we're nice, we can pray, but I don't know about the collaboration. I do think a lot of one person may not have like 200 million to get a TV license, but when 200 people come together or 20 people come together, that money can come out and there's a lot that can be done, just as an example. So, what do you think we can do differently, especially in collaborating, not just with talk, oh, my brother, bless you, but with our money, with our time? Hmm. Wow, I love it. Um, I will speak about this purely as a business person. Yes, please. Um, Katie always asked me, I don't want to put what you do, you don't want to put this, you don't want to put that. Because sometimes I'm like, 
I don't really want everybody to be knowing what I'm doing. Please let me not be moving on the ground, you know. But Kitty has known me. I mean, I've done business. How are we going to send you hundred million like that? You know. <laughs> You know, no, I'll just come out one day and be like, guys, you know, I'm really, you know, I'm really like calm about these things. I don't come out, you know, please, for my bed, they just, you know, the hair, I'll do it like that. Oh my God, you don't ask for anything. Oh my God. Anyway, I think we need to be intentional. It's something that I've started doing. When I want to do business, I really think about it. It's not discriminatory in a way. Because when you think about the workspace, uh, they ask you, well, it's, a, it's usually a meritocratic or meritocracy where people who come for business should have the acumen to do the business that they are going to do. Sometimes you want to provide opportunities or collaborate with organizations but maybe the the work the ability of the workforce is not what you're looking for and then you often find yourself passing you know um, mm. or 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 you're like okay let me collaborate with this this brother or this sister mm. and you know most business people will tell you that they don't do business in church because or with church people because they just find it gets mixed up then they bring the it's in our country they bring the whole well we are brothers now but you didn't do the job it didn't do the job. It has nothing to do with being brothers and sisters in Christ. It didn't do the job. <laughs> you know, like yeah, it didn't do the work. It didn't do the work. You know, yes, I, we operate in grace, but there's something that like Robert Pastor Robert Morris says. He said the righteousness in grace is even it calls us to a higher standard. It calls mm. us to a higher standard. The law says don't commit adultery. Grace says don't lust. So even mm. that is before the action in here what is going on there so i think we need to be intentional you know whenever i want to collaborate with somebody i keep in mind that okay i need to assess this person's ability to do that and maybe if i'm in a more empowered situation i need to provide the training i need to provide i need to follow up i need to build this person up i need to probably provide more mentorship and guidance than if i was dealing with the average business person who already knows what they're doing Mm. so you kind of have to invest yeah. you have to invest more it's just the truth you will i'm not saying that they're not competent christian companies i would hope that the things i do are also quite competent but you know when mm -hmm. you find that you're with somebody who is maybe not as competent as you like you might have to be intentional about training mentorship giving them resources providing for them and not thinking about it in a way like okay i'm going to take this thing back to this person you're just going to have to do it and accept that this is not something you will get anything back for, but it is your service to the kingdom. You know, and that's how you, you can serve God in, in, in business. I think also, everything I'm going to say is just going to be about intentionality. I'm a big music head. You probably know. Mm -hmm. I'm a massive mm -hmm. music um, I listen to music all the way from the 40s to now. Mm -hmm. So, like, my music is very extensive. Um, mm -hmm. And what I find is that, especially around Christian music, you know, I had a friend, uh, my wonderful big brother, who, um, you know, he did this show, uh, Peter Sparks, you'll probably see this when I post it, you know, about songs and their lyrics and, you know, getting people on music heads like us to talk about music that we like, all spheres. It wasn't necessarily like a, a Christian thing, but what I find is that we also need to be intentional about finding the music. We need to be intentional mm. about supporting ourselves, not just what we we hear on radio. It's it's mm -hmm. it's very easy to listen to something on radio and just accept it. But there there is a plethora. I mean, a great amount beyond the Maverick cities, beyond the elevation worship, beyond the you know the yes. Wars and the Nathaniel Basses. They're all beautiful. But my God, if you dive in, you will find people who are doing beautiful fantastic things their voices are just phenomenal you know the other day not well not too long ago i listened to kelonte gavin oh Lord. you know like when i listen to you oh guy if you are listening sorry oh guy means like sir if you see this thing sir, uh -huh. just know that you are a blessed man of god you get me no the people are doing great beautiful things so i think even for me i need to do more 
just you know with mm. the things i do my podcast stuff like that like i need to start highlighting gospel music and and there are, there are beautiful love songs that are written by you know um christians beauty i'm talking wonderful um i don't know if you've heard um isaac curry's um her or ah, i need to send it i need to post it He's yes. so oh, if you hear this, or if you hear the, the bass, the way the thing will enter, mm-hmm. holy ghost, I said, hey, bro, you have finished it off here, you know? So that means, Anita, you need to do publicity for this song, so, because we're not aware. There's a fantastic, I'll put, I'll, I'll, there's a fantastic um site called, um on Instagram, Gospel Guru. Every mm. time he's posting um you know gospel guru posts yes. songs like mm-hmm. like songs that you will not hear in the mainstream and the thing is you know the media mm-hmm. cannot is usually used sorry oh, media is usually used for the things of the world so the media <laughs> is not going to actively come out and mm-hmm. give you god unless mm-hmm. a person is intentional about it business is not going to actively or intentionally give you god unless the person mm. is intentional about it so about i think it. lastly mm. to the thing about collaboration how can we do better i think we yes. have to remember so that that. media that is used for god yes we need to be mm. more intentional about even when we are working in the in the in the big media spaces we need to be mm-hmm. intentional about highlighting christ highlighting god bringing things that edify people it's it's not an easy thing because when you're climbing you will be pushed down a lot but you have to mm. that thing Vera was saying about your journey mm. your journey your journey your journey you're talking about somebody who's opening a spa i can't wait for when i will bring my my things for you people my health so, and tips. Yes. Yes. when i bring it it's going to have christ in it i tell people business with christ is like the best thing you can do but i think we need to have the patience we need to trust people more um and be ready to lose money Let me say it now. I don't like to talk up. Okay? Be ready when you go into a relationship with a brother or sister in Christ. Mm-hmm. Think to yourself, if I lose this money, Lord, just take it as my offering. <laughs> you know, like... Investment into your think, kingdom. As investment into your kingdom. Because I have to tell my sister, I do some fashion business. And hey, sometimes... You know, tell us. You will give them one thing. They will design, eh? Like this for you, but you give them straight. <laughs> you understand? Blood. I have to say, but we are doing business together. You know, like, what do you think? I have to invest my time to mentor. And I cannot now sit here and be complaining. Well, when I'm in church, nobody knows what they are doing. Eh, no. no. People do. Sometimes they just need a little more guidance because the world does not teach people Christian business. It does not teach them fruits of the spirit in business. When you go to business school, they don't teach you how to be patient in business, how to produce the fruits of the spirit. One oh one. It's not there. So how do you expect Christians to operate in a way that exemplifies God? And maybe we need to start doing more courses on how to be how to produce fruits of the spirit in business. How to still be diligent? How actually the word of God should guide our businesses? Like that is the best business school. Mm. The Bible says, you know, talks about when you do something, do it like unto God. If I'm doing business and my business is unto God, my dear, I'll be awake. Seven a.m. I've started my work. What do I need to do? Pause. How to rest? How like? These things, eh? Honestly, we just have to be more intentional. I will post. Please check out Gospel Guru. Mm. Uh, Gospel Guru, you need to check that out. Um, and I personally will say, by God's grace, I will make a conscious effort about putting more music out because people always tell me, "Where do you find that music?" Like? Ah, please come and do. Uh, come and do a playlist for me. Ah, please, I didn't know this song go. Ah, I didn't know that these people are doing something. Um, like that. I'm like, so sorry. I'm a manager, right? So um, I'm going to manage that business for you. You're going to be creating plays for people, yeah. right? Hundred dollars hey. per per playlist hey. and stuff. Just let me know. Come on, <laughs> Spotify, Apple, everywhere. Hey, Sammy. 
Yeah, but, but it's, it's, it's really, really important. I think we just need to be intentional. It's just what I would say from a business perspective as a Christian. Be intentional. Invest in your brothers and sisters. Um, don't be shy. Um, be prepared to maybe invest a little bit more in business. It's not always just giving in church. Sometimes give to yeah. your brothers and sisters. Build them up. Let us become more more like a solid unit. Because I'm sure there yeah. are people who can... If I come up now, I'm telling you, and I come up and I say, guys, I need to get 100 million. to have their act together but maybe they don't like maybe they don't right. maybe you need to invest yeah. that time and that that energy in them and god will bless you for it mm -hmm. hello you're back you see me oh wow thank you so much anita thank mm -hmm. you it was full your responses were really full so i want to go to i was actually to oh, no, now oh i see vera has left i believe she will okay let mm -hmm. me add that back before God, but yes, oh my no, you are the next. What are your thoughts on building, uh, yeah, businesses and then industries? Because again, a lot of times, you know, people let's let's talk about the media preference. People say things like, oh, you know, that people uh, the media is being for this and that. But I'm just wondering, maybe other people have you have people come out to collaborate to build. The kind of future of the media they want to see as an example. So those are some of the thoughts that come to my own mind. But what do you think? It may even be another industry. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Anita, for that contribution. And um, Vera, for wanting to manage the business. So you want to sideline me and then say, we are You know, you can add yourself inside, please. Please don't be shy. Better know what is happening. Don't be shy. Yes. And anyway, so and this is kind of a broad uh, topic. Really big, yes. And we have lived how many lives on earth? So several things have been happening. Mm -hmm. uh, whether in the, in any form of industry. Yes. And this thing have been I was learning about the seven mountains of India. Mm -hmm. You know, because that will help you narrow down based on how you are growing and how the vision that God has given to you, what part of um, those mountains that you are supposed to eat. And sometimes we think that we are supposed to be doing something really mighty, like this, calling out for people to give 100 million. So those things are just, I don't know, they are actually, sometimes they are big left. And um, they be not doing that. We can't be doing that much because it it go from first of all. I'm sorry, I'm not going to touch you. Sorry, I'm going to ask. Bear, uh, please, could you mute yourself? I think there are sounds coming from your. Is it possible? Yeah. Is it possible? Yes, yeah, you can mute yourself. Yeah. like a man. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Let me just let me just go. Don't worry. Continue. Okay. 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 All right. Please go on, Norman. So, yeah. So even the video things, God bless yes, him. Yes, yes. Yeah, um, but this is the thing: the church is not an organized Christian welfare. It's not an organized Christian welfare. It's the branch mm -hmm. of the church is not only for money. It's not only for giving money, just as you said. Mm -hmm. The church is a place of transformation. It's a place mm -hmm. that has been set. To bring things that are lost. So it, it, it's sometimes not trendy. And then, too, we are living in a wicked world. The Bible says that there is ever increasing wickedness. Mm -hmm. Wickedness 
spread out <coughs> is spreading like a wildfire. So what what the story looks like and the question trend is let's talk for collaboration. So many, in fact, this is this let me start here. When you come into Christ, first step you are new to listen. The nature of Christ, just like Anita was emphasizing me, one of these is we are given the gift of giving. Because mm-hmm. God is a natural star. And the way he expresses himself, the way he has expressed the depth of his love is by giving his own potential. <coughs> he didn't send God, he didn't send Jesus the money. He said, bless the poor people in Israel. Mm-hmm. He didn't send the true big church. That is when Jesus is a big church in Israel, people will be saved. He sent him as a man. And the fact when Jesus came as a man, he taught people how to begin to first of all think like God. Then in thinking like God, you can give like him, you can walk like him, and then you can be changed. So what we are doing is we are following the head. The head is Jesus Christ. He's the head over all of this mountain of influence. And business is just one of the mountains of influence. In fact, recently, there's been a revelation that's been coming to my mind. And the Lord was, and I was just saying, I asked God, based on my own experience, I said, there is no mountain of health. There is mountain of business, there's mountain of education, there's mountain of um, media, entertainment. There is mm-hmm. But there yeah. is no mountain of health, which is the if someone is not healthy, how can they even come on? The of God? Come and, on, you know, and, and I was like, there has to be a mountain of health, you have to be part of those mountain of influence. You can mm. see, just like when I, I can't even remember the scientists that came up and they said, No, the nucleus doesn't stop there, there's action. You can see as we grow more in God, the vision of God is God. Mm. I started to create that mountain of hell. I started to say, Lord, in this mountain of hell, every thing that you are raising to stand in this mountain of hell, to be able to finance health, to be able to pray in the spirit for this territory of hell to be taken up for God. We will rise up, and this is not in a place of me being over healthy. I have suffered pain in my body that sometimes I felt like I was going to die. But because of God's mercy, when that revelation of that mountain of health came, I said, ah, What can I do to start investing in myself so mm-hmm. that I can have an understanding of what to you know, do or, and how to take over this, uh, uh, this man. And I have been getting attacked. Just, I'm not even, this is the first time I'm even sharing this with I've been getting attacked and held and said, let me tell you, the love of God can pursue any feelings that I have. The love of God drives out any time of fear. But coming back to the topic of this thing, we cannot use worldly standards mm. to you know, be compared to godly standards. Of course, mm. not laziness. Of course, it's competency. But yeah. there is also, you know, there's the mountain of, there's the mountain of family. I think so. There's a mountain of family. It's a key structure to what we want the church to be. And in learning that, from, from family business grows, from family you give birth to children that Maybe you know, our feet and whatever it is, let, let's maybe go to the diversity of what anybody can do from family. But if all of us now, people that are single, people that are married, if we learn the basis and the structure of heaven, if we learn what it is to be kingdom minded, to be kingdom intentional, to think about the kingdom of God coming to our experience and our life here on earth, the paradigm changes. The paradigm changes for us. It changes for how we respond to businesses. What we do is determined on our kingdom intellect, our spiritual intellect, our intelligence. So money is not really the value of what is needed for any man's growth or its transformation. 
what is needed is to say, okay, I'm in the place of, like, I, I know a family who they designed it quarterly. They are just small families, not that they are making millions. No, mm-hmm. the money they are making, they look for four ministries that are small and grown. They look for them, they put it in their calendar, and every three quarters, they would have saved up their time to this level and throw this amount into the ministry. So that nobody is coming, there will be nobody who just come up with the idea of ah, we have a um, program or this month. Please give us ah, but you know our plan with you is three quarter every three quarter of the year. We are going to send you this amount of money to support your dream, to support this church, and to help you to also disciple other ministers to love the Lord. So that is what this family do from their own benevolence. It was a thing that the Lord inspired to them and said, you people are doing this and you know, it inspires us as well, but we're also working on it. So that that place of giving those people, those people mm-hmm. come back to them and give reports. So they are mm-hmm. accountable. So the people mm-hmm. of the world, they are not accountable. They are not mm-hmm. accountable. Mm-hmm. Nobody can go and ask you know, which charity home did you give or how much it was. It was out of his own you know, whatever it is. Our mm. giving now is based on the conviction we have in Jesus. And it does it just have to follow a trend. You don't have to follow a, a, a trend that is happening around. There's a pattern of heaven for us to use. And you have been mm. called to your mountain of influence. Only where you have been called, the Holy Spirit in his great wisdom will tell you, okay, I need to you have been called to the mountain of influence. How can the mountain of business will collaborate with the mountain of family or education or media? Who are you know who are those people? They might be ordinary people, they don't have leaders that I mean, look at how ordinary I am. That kind of you know thought came to my mind that there's a mountain of health. I, I'm sure probably there are thousands of people who have gotten that revelation as well yes, who are now doing the liberty that this is. I take hold of this territory by the power of the Holy Ghost. Then, as um, I think, too, the media circulates news that influences our soul. Mm. The soul is, is the soul is such a powerful machine of our mm. life. It connects us between the physical realm and the spiritual realm. And what is in our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions, our desires. Now, what you feed into your soul, the quality of what you put in your soul is what you give out. Mm -hmm. And for us as Christians, we want to be deliberate about the things we feed our soul, the kind of information that influences our our notions and our our motives. We want Mm -hmm. to be intentional about those things. And if we are, if we are, if we are concerned, you know, our concern should grow from a place of um, love, the love of God, and what the love of God should influence us to do at every particular point in time. For me, that I'm a mother now, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not working. This is the whole mm. I'm not working. You don't expect me to pay tithe because I'm not working. You understand. Mm. I know within my heart of heart that every day that I spend time reading the Bible to my children, teaching them, grooming them, learning of Jesus, loving my husband, being a good sister, is a form of me giving myself. So let us not also try and place burden on people who might not necessarily be able to give mm. the money. Yes. Mm. And then make them feel bad. Because they don't give money. What if they are not working? What if in their small in their small distance, the money they get from maybe their husband, they are able to feed a lot of people that are hungry, and you don't see that thing, and yet we are condemning. Yeah, God the gold. The, the body of Christ is he came for us today. <laughs> <laughs> the, the body of Christ is growing. And it's mm. a mighty force that is moving on the earth that is not following trend, it is not following mm. the ideology of man, it is not based on what we can even give. It is first and foremost based on who Jesus is, what he has done, and what he wants us to become. 
And that place comes as a result of mind change in the Holy mm. Spirit. So how do we now collaborate more? Just like you are doing, bringing the four of us to have this kind of discussion. Mm. Then when people join, when people listen, their mind is expanded to the things of God, not the things that we are saying. Because what we're saying is very, very limited. Mm. We don't know everything. It's limited. Mm. So what we are saying is redirect your step. Learn from the Holy Spirit. Learn mm. from Jesus. Because he knows all things. And the part he teaches you, he will empower you. And the empowerment comes from first, your willingness to learn. Because mm. if you take the horse to the river, you can't force it to drink. Many people are unwilling to learn. Many Christians who are complaining that other Christians are lazy, people are not giving, go and check their heart of hearts. They don't want to give and they don't want to learn. No, not you. I'm, I mean, they don't want to give and they don't want to learn. They want to follow trend. Awati, they, we bar, they want to follow trend. But sit down, reflect. Another thing, if, as you're willing to learn, another thing, pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Oh my God, you have to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. To first of all, to love God and to follow His will, then two, to know your rightful place in the assignment that God has willed for you. Then so three, good. Of, so good. yes, three, yes, three. No, when you find that place that you want to do, you want to in, that the Lord has told you to be a force, look for materials they are available online that can ground you in that place of your assignment uh, don't be under pressure to to start doing or giving or, eh, eh, the holy spirit will guide you on what to give and how to it can be a word of encouragement it can be wisdom that you give. give somebody that that person's life will change 360 and they can bring 10 billion to your account and say this thing you told me Four years ago, my life, the trajectory of my life changed, and I want to come and bless you. You, you yourself, you'll be afraid to collect that kind of money. In case someone that you have blessed now comes and say, In mm. case eh, I vowed that when I make it as a result of what you have done for me, I'm blessing your ministry with 10 billion. Is that a kind of thing you want to be announcing to the world? No, it won't go. Mm. With the fear of God in your heart, you won't come and say, Hey, the person that I was influencing. Came today hmm. and gave me 10 billion. We are not the people of the world. Yeah. No, yeah. Are not. Yeah. They, are, they are touching. They are people of God that are doing simple community services, blessing life, people changing. And let me tell you, the impact is more tangible, is more powerful than all this jamboree that we do online. That's why I don't, social media is not my standard at all for operation. Kingdom. So another then the last thing, of course, when the Holy Spirit, when you have started to find resources that bless with your life, I mean books. First of all, before you even know how to give, know how to give yourself. Because mm. we don't want to invest in ourselves. Someone like me, I'm not looking for free, free things because I want to manage. But mm. I'm looking for free things because I want to be able to save enough to give other people. But the Lord says, Okay, this is how you can bless you. Buy a new shoe or you know, do this, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. So we learn in the process of the measure of what people's needs are based on how God has loved us and how much he has shown us his love. Then, you know, you build yourself in the materials that God has given you. Then, at the, end, the small thing you can start doing, you be cut being a life coach like Vera. I mean, this is being the focus of knowing fitting into the plan of God for your life. Because one, let me tell you, no matter how much you talk, social media or whatever it is, to break those kind of news. Nobody will out when some day and me or uh, they will 10,000 churches. They will quickly put that news down that please, this is not what, this is not interesting, this is not fun. Or someone like David Do came now to a hundred million forty eight hours. <laughs> it will be it's not like it's not like big news mm. it's like big news how can that even be what? do you know what jesus did jesus gave himself to die for of 
the amount of money can ever pay for that. And we can be saved by only believing in all that Jesus has done. That alone, when you tell someone who is addicted and dying in sin and in pain, no one can save that person. No amount of money can save that person. So what we want to do is to our young people that don't be, don't be enticed by what you see. First of all, look up. Then when the, the relationship from up is getting solid, it transfers down. It goes like this. Mm. So it's vertical and then I've been sure it's going to be like this, whatever. But it's up and then down. And it transfers, it just begins to spread. The love of God begins to spread around you. And don't wait for big places to collaborate. Wherever you are, stand up, wake up in Jesus Christ that you know. Educate the people that are around you. Just Anita said, I'm doing a business fashion designer and it's a burden to want to, it's hard to want to raise other people to have the love of God in their hearts. Let me tell you, it's a massive burden. But if you know that the love of God has got you this far and you have the strength and the ability, don't put yourself under pressure. If the Holy Spirit is, if you have a real baptism of the Holy Spirit that empowers you to, to be strong first in yourself and the Lord and then to teach other people, start with one person. That don't wait for don't wait for church don't wait for mm -mm. start with yourself collaborate with simple people that you know if you are making money and you know that you mm. can pay your tithe regularly i'm not sizing tithe please i'm not a, i'm just saying that if tithe is a medium for you to bless a church that is raising young people that you can say mm. This is how I want my tithes to be used. In the teaching ministry, I want it to be used for their daily food. I want people who cannot write their who cannot pay for their jam. I want this tithe to be used to pay for somebody's jam. Mm. It's specific. Let there be a... The problem too is that there's no accountability in the church. So that's the problem. So God will help us. Let's not even go down that road. But if you are making money to give, please, Say God, this money I want to bless it to this person to do their exam. There are people around us who are suffering. Jesus said we will always have the poor. The poor people can mm -hmm. in life. So if you are making more money, somebody blesses you. You say, okay, out of this money, I will give hundred dollars to four people. I will give this one four. Let me tell you, the, the prayer of those people that you are blessing <laughs> it will take you far. But first of all, let your giving be first and foremost be rooted through and from the love of God. And never use worldly standards for the things of God. It is it's it's easy and it can go. I'm Thank sorry that you so much. Oh, no. <laughs> so Thank you. Thank you so much. So Vera, and then we'll wrap up after Vera. Um oh my god, guys. Oh, I can't believe I was going to miss this. It was so good. Both of you, so good, so good, so good, honestly. I think now I'm convinced, like, oh, for a fact that God is raising people, right? It's not, it's not hearsay. Do you get mm. It's not hearsay. And it's not something that, and it's not something that you're probably, like, just, YouTube or online, people are actually being raised as disciples in these times for God, and it's beautiful to see. So I'm very, I'm glad. I think we were picked by the Spirit of God. In case you, God, you picked us by, 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 very much by the Spirit of God. Yeah, yep. correct. So, um, wow. I think when it comes to this, I think can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can. Okay. I can, yeah. Okay. okay. So, like, when it comes to this and uh, business, I mean, I'm a businesswoman, I'm a coach, but, like, mostly, I like the money. I like the money, fam. <laughs> like, I'm not going to tell you that, like, see, I'm a billionaire in dollars. I like the money. It's important. <laughs> and all of that. <laughs> but this is what I would say. I will say that 
one of the things I was sharing with my sister um, yesterday was that it's a burden that we keep having con conferences, but like very few people are actually doing mm. what they're saying. Like, when are we going to stop talking, fam? When when are we going to stop talking? Like, when are we going to start doing more than we're saying? When are we going to start practicing more of what, like, God is putting in our spirits in the private spaces? When are we going to stop holding... Co we're, we're, like, Africa, we're being applauded for conferences, guys. Like, the world is giving us awards for speaking and few of it for doing. The people that... I was telling this to someone. I mean, I'm in the educational space. Yes, I'm a coach and all of that, but I'm in the educational space. And I work with teenagers. I work with parents. I work with um, I work with students. I mean, students, uh, educators, and, and uh, their parents. And I can categorically tell you that nobody sees what we do. Right? Nobody sees all the times where I sit down with a child that wants to commit suicide. And like the child literally makes up their minds to like leave again. You can't get awarded for that. It's not for sure. I don't even like I've had tons and tons of interviews and TV recognition to last a lifetime. But the truth is that those are just recognition. The real award, I've never gotten one award per se because the person that gives the award is not man, it's God. Do you understand? Mm. Nobody sees all those times where like we're talking people out of like wanting to be wanting to go mad because I've I've had situations where like the kids are sending nude pictures to themselves. I've had situations to get like real life and real time situations with these teenagers I call my own. You get and and these guys I, I did give birth to them. Right, I could have as well decided not to do anything. That I could have as well decided to sit in my car, like do anything. But like this is the callings that God have got. This is the calling God has on my life, right? And I tell mm. this to people all the time, Kingdom people, are you going to like live for the audience of one? Like, are you first of all? Then second of all, are you going to learn this? You're going to learn. Are you going to be excellent at what you're going to be excellent at, or are you going to keep? Uh, act i don't know how to put it you know the reason why people don't like doing business with the church i mean is what it is they have a way of i mean you you everybody has talked about it accountability law she understand there's not there's nothing like law it's actually one of the reasons why i still go to the church i go to till today is because my pastor is super duper accountable he has said this plenty and he has like a board of directors they know how how the monies are going they know what is happening with the monies he, they know how much he's being paid. We know how much our pastor is being paid. Do you understand? It's intentional. And we always say to him that we want, like all the times we've given to our pastor and all of that, we love him. We love what he's doing with the church. We see it. He's not trying to like, we, are, we, we buy the things that he uses. He's, do you understand? The car, the whatever. We love him to like, to be it's just like for all of us as well if we're going to be if god is going to be calling us out god has to be the one feeding us as well and that's not a bad thing in it it's not a bad thing do you understand it's not so the question is are we excellent enough are we going to say to ourselves that like, i'm we could stop talking and just go out there and do what god has asked us to do and i love what you said if you if you have the strength to to encourage my last conference I did, I remember saying that thing. I'm like, if it's a hug, God has given you strength to do hug. If it's a word of encouragement, if you have to see people through suicidal thoughts and all of those things, men, mm. women, children, orphans, um, what they call them, boys, girls, whatever audience God is calling you for. If it's a storybook you're going to be reading to them that is going to change their lives for the best, that if it's whatever thing you have to do for community building whatever thing you have to do to, to 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 disciple people all the work we're being called to do fashion design educational system media health whatever thing god is calling you to do just know that your job your job at the end of the day is to disciple people that's our job we've come into the world to disciple the world to disciple people right 
So all of this thing is not just going to stop inside of the four walls of the, of the church of Jesus Christ. No, it's going to come out. The church has to come out and do what it's asking us to. If if it's going to be inside of a WhatsApp group, do it, fam. Right. If it's going to be inside of a community, inside your home, do it. Do you understand? So it's that's what kingdom is and collaboration. Anything you can collaborate to anything. I love what Omena said. It just doesn't have to be money. Right, can collaborate with anything. Mm -hmm. But I also found out that there's something ch the children of God do. We like to keep our money to ourselves. We hoard it. Uh -huh. <laughs> he say, he say, he say. Have you noticed that we we'll probably like buy a hundred? I this is this is something I love shoes, and I can buy like a hundred, two hundred, and or two hundred dollars shoes. I'm telling you, and like I love shoes a lot. So. I can literally do that. But when it comes to like the church, like things that we want to give inside of your offering, we start to we start to think about is a spirit. Is a spirit. Is a is a poverty mentality. We like mm -hmm. to hoard. It's like could you get ah oh my I have children to pay, I have this one to do, I have that to do, I have school fees and all of that. Mm -hmm. but when, so those guys that would literally do that for themselves, the reason why we don't do that for ourselves is because I, two things. One of them is we have the poverty mentality. And number two, whenever we step up, we don't bring other people. David says that, you know, how many of you lift other people up where we're coming up? How many of us are actually actively doing that? It's a principle. Mm. You see, as you're going up, bring other people with you up. And the more you do that, the more blessed you are it's just life it's just a principle right so how many of us are actively wanting to disciple people um, recently god has been calling me to like build a billionaire's club where like i'm actually having to help like myself and other people to like become billionaires in the next two to five years and i've been doing that and i've been excited about it. every single person i tell about it they're like ah Kodri, i'm going to buy a car by this time next year i'm like bring it on do you understand now it's a form of discipleship where we come mm. praying tongues when we finish praying in tongues we strategize i have all of the formats all the do's and those i have the value system if you're a muslim you are lying mm. if you're a christian you are lying but here's the point i have been called to disciple the nations of the world do you want money or not do you want to become a billionaire or not when you come inside you will you will sit up you will do all the things i ask you to do why because he wants to become a billionaire, but guess what? God will use the journey to trap you. And once he traps you in the journey, the reason why we have Tiwa Savages, the Davidos, because the church did not teach them how to become billionaires. Period. Mm. Period. We do not have the capacity wow. to teach them. We do not have the capacity to sponsor them. We do not have the capacity to help them when it was their time of need. We do not have the capacity to love when we we're supposed to understand and now you're coming and you're saying that they left the church they did they left the church yes you did not help them so it's time that we get into the financial space it's time that we get into the business space it's time we start getting accountable for monies that we've gotten it's time we start giving the way god wants us to give whether it's in tithing or in offering or whatever he's telling you to do with your tight instruction based you understand so let's do whatever thing God will have us do for real, for real. That's what I have to say about that. If I continue like this, all of us will just be going. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anita. Thank you, Mono. I hope that you can hear me. It has been a beautiful conversation, and anytime we come together, there is just always so much wisdom and understanding as well that has been shared. And we'll definitely do this again. I will share more details behind the scene. Thank you for your time. I do not take it for granted. Thank you to everybody that has stayed through Chico and Makeup, um, staying through watching this video, and that will also watch the play as well. We'll see you in the next edition. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye. Talk to me later. Love yeah, upon yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Bye. You're real.